Hi, welcome to the Lone Star Dowsers March 2024 meeting. Um, we are very happy that you're here. And um, before we get started, I have a few announcements that I'd like to make. Um, if you're local to the Houston area, um, we have the Old Weird Houston this Saturday from 10 to 6 p.m. And um, Catherine Ashby and Emily and possibly Robbie will be at Old Weird Houston and they're going to be um, showing folks how to dow. So if you're there, stop by, say hi, join the fun. And it's at the Orange Show Pavilion. So, and that's in Houston. The, I'm trying to think of what else. Um, if you are not on our um, email list and you would like to be, put your email in the chat or we've also put the um email, you can um, send a request to join the email at Lone Star Dowsers, that's plural, tx at gmail.com. And let's see, there's Dows for the Planet every Thursday night on Zoom. Um, and we also have uh, weekly dowsing Zooms for aid in relief from fires, drought, heat waves, and floods. Um, so that is on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. There's lots of wonderful dowsing things going on around the country. So um, if you get on our email list, we will send you that information and you can join in from wherever you are. So, um, oh, also um, we run on donations. So if you um, appreciate what is being presented and you would like to um, show your appreciation with a donation that helps um, with our Zoom and, and other expenses. So um, if you would like to send a PayPal or a check, um, you are welcome to do that. Um, and PayPal would live beautifully and it's, it will also be on our email list. So we appreciate all those that have donated. Um, just makes things easier. So tonight we're in for a treat. Um, we have Dr. Jerry Jen, who is an author and a scientist and He's going to talk about understanding your personal wavelength and your I am presence. He's got a lot more in store for us. So I'll, I'm going to kind of read what um, part of his overview for tonight. So um, learning to use the pendulum to detect the energy of yourself is carried out by determining your personal wavelength. And he finds this tool really useful. Um, and he loves it to use it to gather information on almost an unlimited number of areas. So this can help you know, with food, essential oils, crystals, supplements, um, finding out what's good for you, um, you know, or situations or people, um, does it serve a positive function for me? And he's also going to speak about the who am I and what is my essence and how do I know if I am connecting to the essence of who I am? So um, there's a lot of information around that. He's also um, going to teach us about the energies of harmony, which is BG3. So any of you a little bit familiar with biogeometry, um, that's like a key factor um, that is happening. And also creation, which is 369. And I think he uses that to test with the personal wavelength. So he's got a lot of really good information for us. And um, I'm just delighted to have him here. So you also have a wonderful, um, bio. So he has a PhD in biochemistry and Jerry Jen has spent more than 55 years in the healthcare, pharmaceutical, diagnostic, laboratory medicine, and biotechnology energy in industries. He's also founded several companies and he holds multiple patents. His passionate interests have been in the areas of mind being, consciousness and the nature of reality jerry's chairman and ceo of the foundation for mind being research which is fmbr.org and he's also the author of the seeker of light and the teacher of light and science subtle energies and spiritualities a path to i am so please help me welcome jerry jen okay well thank you very much mary i appreciate that uh, introduction and hopefully I can convey some information uh, to everyone uh, tonight. 
Um, I'll put a uh, share screen on so that uh, I have, it's easier to talk uh, with various slides because I'll be covering a, a lot of material. So I'll put share screen on and click share and uh, click on to the presentation. And uh, whoops, let me go to the beginning of the presentation and click. Okay, hopefully everyone can see, uh, is everyone able to see the, the slides? Hopefully so. If not, uh, please speak up. Uh, <clears throat> personal wavelength is a very important topic uh, because that really covers a lot of areas that uh, are very useful for you to, to learn about. And just as an introduction, these are my two books, The Seeker and the Teacher of Light and Science, Subtle Energies and Spirituality. Um, and I won't go through my introduction since Mary did a great job of that. Um, Joheen Whippich is the uh, teacher of light in my first book. And he's actually on tonight. Uh, uh, he's part of the audience there. Um, he truly is a teacher of light, uh, very intuitive a teacher of healing, dowsing, and many, many other things. So I'm very happy that he's here uh, tonight. And uh, yeah, if you want to look at my website, uh, it's jerrygen.com. Uh, and it does have a lot of the affirmations in there. It's in my both books, but um, you'll get the affirmations on the, the website also. And if you're not familiar with Foundation for Mind Being Research, uh, be sure to look it up uh, uh, on the web, and uh, there are talks going on uh, every every few weeks on all sorts of topics: uh, healing, consciousness, science, uh, um, etc. Okay, personal wavelength. What does that mean? It's really measuring the subtle energies of yourself. And when you do that, you can know what's good for you or not good for you, or if it doesn't make any difference, because then you'll know if it's in resonance uh, with you. And you can use it for many, many uh, purposes. I use it on a daily basis for a variety of reasons. Uh, if I'm looking at my personal wavelength, uh, and looking at uh, my I am, am I in that uh, space? It'll tell me if I am eating a food that uh, is it still good from the refrigerator? Uh, is the supplement uh, or the supplements I'm taking uh, proper and good for me? Um, the essential oils, which ones are good for me? Crystals, everyone has crystals. Uh, which ones are really serving uh, my benefit? So you have many, many things that you can do with it. It's a wonderful tool for studying uh, the subtle energies. And I'll go into that aspect of it. So what I'll do uh, before I get into the personal wavelength is just give you a little bit of background in, in terms of measuring um, personal wavelength. Uh, you have to understand a little bit about subtle energies, a little bit about radiesthesia, which is the basis of the personal wavelength measurements, a little bit about uh, pendulums, and you really need to understand the principles of resonance. And everyone's a dowser in this group, or almost everyone, and there's a technique that Joachim Whippich taught, which is securing your resonance. And I'll go through that also, because that elevates your ability to douse, it increases the energy of you. And certainly when you get into the I am essence, that really increases your energy level until you get into a center of stillness. And then you're like, if you meditated for hours, uh, you're in there immediately with affirmations. So that's uh, something that we will do. So we'll spend some practical time uh, looking at uh, doing personal wavelength and we'll do some uh, of the affirmations and practice of the, uh, that also so that you know how to get into that uh, level of, of vibration 
you truly will be at a higher level of vibration. And that's another way of knowing that you truly are, I am, you're connected. So it's like way, the personal connected. wavelength is the sweet spot. Sweet spot, and that's the reason I put it into the center there, because that's a, a way to look at uh, how to do various things. That's the, the true center is the, the essence of who you are, but how do you measure it and how do you know? And that's a personal wavelength. And as you learn about your own essence, uh, you are a creator. And I'll give examples of how uh, you know you're a creator. I'll teach you how to move subtle energies. Uh, we'll bless some water or at least teach you how to do that and see what happens. Uh, introduce you to some key words that are very important because you create with words, you create with thoughts because you are thoughts and you'll learn the magic of rethink and the limitations of, of words and what we're here for in, in life and that's to evolve. And why beautiful is a wonderful word because that's who everyone is, beautiful. Uh, then there's things that you, you're not familiar with. Um, birth of a new humanity. I'll touch upon that at the very, very end. Won't go into depth on that, but uh, we are changing in amazing ways. And you're not, look, you're not seeing it because you're not measuring uh, the subtle energies. But we're all being upgraded uh, as we speak, and the earth is being upgraded as we speak. And this has been going on uh, for at least uh, uh, three quarters of a year now. Yeah, I think on some level, most of us are aware that things are changing dynamically. It, it really is. And if you're measuring it, you'll, you'll see those changes. You'll see what's happening in the subtle energy fields. But Let's talk a little bit about the resonance, since that's really the basis of the personal wavelength technique. And everyone knows the tuning fork. If you strike the tuning fork, it vibrates, and every tuning fork of different octaves, higher or lower, will vibrate. The same is true with a stringed instrument. Here's a monochord instrument. And if you pluck the string, and the string is held uh, by two uh, of those little triangular uh, uh, sections. And that length is what gives it the note. And, that, and that's the length of the string that gives it uh, the note. If you pluck that, all strings of other uh, uh, octaves, strings that are twice as long, four times as long, half as long, will also vibrate. And those are the different octaves uh, that are there. Uh, but that's really is the basis of resonance and the basis of the personal wavelength technique. And how do you know that? Well, we have the monochord and the monochord is, has two ends to it. And so the string length is W. And then in a pendulum, you have two fixed points also. You have your fingers, which is holding the string. That's a little dot on the top and the weight of the pendulum and the Length of string is really what you're looking at. And if you're in resonance with an energy, uh, if you get the string length to be the right length, it'll come into resonance with that energy. And that's how you detect that energy. So when you're doing your own personal wavelength, you're getting the wavelength of you. And I'll show you how to get wavelengths of colors and things of that nature. But this is fundamental to the whole uh, technique. And subtle energies, what are they? Well, everything gives off subtle energies. Uh, the chair you're sitting on, the colors that you look around the room, the angles, the sounds, everything gives it off. And the beauty of it is that you can measure it. You can detect it and know what it is. And that is what, that is very, very important. It's not subtle, you think, ah, oh, well, subtle, so therefore you don't see it and it's not there. No, it's there and it's everywhere. And as you learn to look at it, uh, many uses for it. And when you look at a food, is it good or bad? You're looking at subtle energies. When you douse for water, you're really looking at subtle energies of, of the water. Um, you're connecting with the energies of the water. 
in just just like this is that uh, subtle energies are there and you can connect with it. And in the personal wavelength technique, uh, you know if something is good for you if it's in resonance with you. Uh, if it's good for you, uh, the pendulum will go clockwise. If it's not good for you, uh, the pendulum will go counterclockwise. If it doesn't matter, uh, it's neither good nor bad for you, the pendulum will just go to and fro. And you can determine the presence of environmental harmony, like with the BG3 materials. Uh, you look at decay or uh, things that are being created by the direction of the pendulum also. And there's other uh, uh, purposes and uses for all, all of this. In terms of understanding what radiesthesia is, it's a big word, but it, uh, it's really a study of, of the energies. And the personal wavelength is really the uh, really a, one of the cruxes of that uh, uh, technology. So you're looking at your vibrational levels if you're measuring yourself, you're looking at the vibrations or energies of something else, whether it be a food or, or an element or whatever it is. Um, even when you're doing mental dowsing, sometimes you're really using radiesthesia and you may not be calling it that. Uh, I think that when you're looking for water, you really are looking at the energies of water. And so you really are looking at the energies also in addition to standard ways of teaching it. In terms of radiesthesia, uh, or in terms of the mind, the mind really is, has access to a heck of a lot of information. Your subconscious has that information, or you can say it's the right brain has that information. Your left brain is looking at the senses and understanding things and thinking logically. And there is a veil that blocks that information. So sometimes uh, information doesn't get through uh, to, the, to the left brain. Uh, but with a pendulum use, being used as a focusing device, you start to get that information because you, that brain now can pick up that information and translate that to a motion in the pendulum. You just have to teach the pendulum to move uh, just like a baby learns to walk. Um, if you're learning to walk pretty soon, the left foot goes in front of the right foot and you're running and doing things and it's unconscious. It's the same thing, once you learn how to uh, get a pendulum to go clockwise to and fro and counterclockwise, you basically have learned the techniques of uh, how to use radius seizure to douse with radius seizure. And now you just let the uh, energies flow from your brain to your uh, uh, fingers, even though your uh, conscious mind may not understand what's happening, the pendulum will move clockwise, counterclockwise, because you, you're now in resonance with that energy based upon that string length. So I mentioned this already that the clockwise, something is good for you in resonance, counterclockwise, not good for you. And uh, the other key thing about uh, radius seizure is that you're not trying to think about something in mental dowsing, you are thinking about something. You're uh, but in radius seizure, uh, you're listening to the uh, energy and you're listening to it on a subconscious level or right brain level. And you're, you do ask the question, show me the energy. But then the energy comes and when it's there, it'll rotate one way or the other. Um, so that is something that is uh, a key but principle. You're not really concentrating on oh, I can make the pendulum go clockwise or counterclockwise. Then you're doing mental dowsing and you're probably not doing mental dowsing correctly because you're trying to get the mind away from doing that when you're mental dowsing anyways. But in radius seizure, you're just looking at energies. The, um, yeah. I know that there are um, schools of thought where you can program your pendulum um, with like, um, I think it's like Robin's book or whatever. Like you program it, this is yes, this is no, and right. um, some different things. So that's what you're calling mental dowsing versus radiesthesia. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. Uh, here you're not so thinking a, it's yes or no. It's a subtle no. difference. It, it is a subtle difference, but it's now looking at the energies. 
versus mental dialysing, you're typically asking a question. Here, you're really not necessarily asking a question. Uh, you're just finding if something is in resonance or not in resonance. If a food is good for you, it's not yes or no, it's in resonance. If it's infected with bacteria, has E. coli, the pendulum will know you, you're, you, the energies will indicate that it's not good for you. So it won't be in resonance with you. And so you're not asking, it, does, is this infected or not infected? You're asking, what is the resonance of this, uh, whatever you're looking at? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's all you're doing. And that's what, that's the beauty of radiesthesia. And I'll get to securing your resonance later on. I'll show this as a slide, but uh, I'll take the sharing off when we do a practice session a little bit later on. Uh, but use a pendulum over uh, your right handed over your left hand, and you hold the pendulum close to where the, the weight is, in this case, the acrylic ball, and you slip your fingers up the string very slowly, and you get a to and fro motion uh, with that uh, uh, pendulum. And at some point, the pendulum will go clockwise over your hand. And that is now your personal wavelength. And it usually falls around one and three quarter inches, two inches, one and a half inches, thereabouts. And if you slip your finger up higher, the clockwise motion will cease. You're no longer in your personal wavelength. But if you continue on the string, you reach the second octave of the string, and that uh, which is twice the length of the first part, and the pendulum will go clockwise again. Uh, you're more sensitive at the lower level of that inch and a half. It's easier for the strings and the rotations to occur. So I usually I stop at the one and a half. I don't go to the twice length. But that's really how you do the personal wavelength. Learn. Uh, what who you are in terms of your vibrational energy. Now, does that change day to day or is that a consistent? Um... That's pretty consistent with uh, who you are. You're basically tuning into yourself. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, yeah, you're just, and it's very quick once you learn how to do it. Uh, I always start with the you know, pendulum ball and string at the uh, right next to the ball. And I just slip my fingers up. You learn to do that very, very quickly. Joachim use a, use a uh, L rod uh, of his own manufacturing. And he just has that uh, technique down pat and it just spins. So here at resonance, you can be in resonance with anything. I'm just showing the concept of resonance. You put an aspirin in a little vial and have aspirin underneath it. The pendulum will go clockwise. It's not based now on string length. Here you're being being in resonance with the uh, the either the water or the the uh, uh, the aspirin, uh, but you can be in resonance with anything. That just shows that uh, here's a red color, and here you have to you don't know what length it's going to be, but uh, you can uh, move your finger up the string gradually and uh, do it with a to and fro motion. And whenever uh, you're in resonance with the color red, the pendulum will go clockwise. And that's how you know, uh, that's how you find out um, subtle energies of, of colors as, a, as an example. So now, if you're you wondering really what to wear, you can, um, you, can, you can see if you're in resonance with that color today. Yeah, you just go to another color and uh, you do the to and fro motion with another color and it won't go clockwise. And go back to the red or to another red, another location, and it'll go clockwise as long as that string length remains the same. And that again proves to you that you are there with the string length um, and that you're in resonance with that color. And someone's asking, are you gonna give us a demonstration so we can- Oh yeah, I'll, okay. uh, we'll, there'll be a practice session uh, and we can do color and we can do, uh, 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 you know, uh, I'm going to go through, a, uh, up through securing your resonance. And okay. then I'm going to do the practice session. And I'll take the share off for a little bit. Um, and then we'll, we'll practice how to do 
the personal wavelength step by step, very, very slowly, because I really, really want everyone to know how to do this. It's just such a useful tool. And uh, then you can learn how to do this, check the subtle energies of anything. Yeah, uh, and it's just a valuable tool, supplements, minerals, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, if you don't have neutral pendulums, the reason people use neutral pendulums is that if you have a crystal pendulum, it might, might buy, have other types of uh, uh, resonances that it can resonate with, uh, and therefore you'd like to have it uh, neutral. And in my books, I tell you how to make a, uh, a Play-Doh ball with flour and salt and let it dry and put a string in it. And you can have a neutral pendulum that way. It doesn't cost anything. Spend 10 or $12 at, on Amazon, and you'll get a, a wooden pendulum. Uh, the acrylic pendulums are usually a little more expensive. Uh, various places will sell it if you look, if you look for it. Uh, but neutral is good. Uh, for our purposes, many of you won't have a neutral pendulum. And what I say is just use your, whatever you have with the exercise and most likely it'll still work um, simply because you're very powerful. You're all very amazing. And, uh, but it's good to have a neutral What about stainless as, steel? Uh, you can use lots of things. Um, and I've used nuts before, uh, tie a string to it. Uh, um, it's... Uh, you you can use it uh, and you can practice with it uh, and see how it works on the most things. If you're doing something with steel, it won't work because it'll be automatically being resistant with it. But uh, that's and the old um, French uh, Jesuits used to on wind pendulums. They cut it. They have a ball and cut it in half and glue it back uh, with the directions reversed so that uh, um, it'll be as neutral as possible. Uh, they really want it to be neutral. But the reality is that um, you can get into resonance with virtually anything, and it's your intentions of being in resonance is probably key to the whole thing anyways. So you can use almost anything, but I shouldn't say that. Okay, securing your resonance. Uh, this is a technique that dowsers and everyone should learn, and it comes from my good friend, Joachim Whippich, and he's... Oh, He's in the audience right now. So I'm just repeating what uh, he's taught because I think it's a very powerful tool. Uh, it has three steps to it, uh, getting your brain, your left and right brain coordinated with your heart. Uh, there's, uh, you get an affirmation to increase your vibrational level and then check to see if you're in harmony with uh, where you're at. And those are the th things that one should do before doing any dowsing or doing any radiesthesia. It's just, uh, it's just useful. And in, in the, uh, this exercise, probably as part of the audience, uh, so you remember these words, uh, practice it. Uh, females say, say it differently and males say it, say it differently. Uh, for women, it's, I'm inviting every thought within, within my left brain in my right brain to join together with my heart, I am. And for men, you reverse it. I'm inviting every thought within my right brain and my left brain to join together with my heart, I am. That's because men have much of their thought as analytical and women feel more. And so it's getting, just getting the order uh, into such an order that uh, uh, you're emphasizing that you want both sides to come together. But uh, I'll give you a second. Just state it to yourself or think it out because uh, it's good to remember this statement. Because you're, 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 I am inviting every thought within my left brain and my right brain to join together with my heart, I am. And for men, I am inviting every thought within my right brain and my left brain to join together with my heart, I am. Very important set of words. It, it really causes the pendulum to really start moving uh, with a lot of energy. Uh, the energy flows to your hand when you make the statement. And the second step is uh, just, I'll be teaching affirmations, so I won't go through this in detail. Uh, 
um, you can say, I am everything I am, which you are. And that, uh, even though you may not believe it or anything else, um, by just stating that, or another one that I use all the time is, I'm rethinking, rethink I am. And uh, that you can probably resonate with more, but I'll explain these terms to you in another section. <clears throat> and then uh, your vibrational rate goes up and it's good to be have, have a good vibrational rate when you're doing uh, dowsing or radius seizure. And you can also test for the amount of, of uh, where you are at in terms of your, uh, your dowsing uh, I am uh, abilities. All you have to do is when you're dowsing, uh, you know, if you're at your personal wavelength, you can just state, uh, is my, my I am is more than 10% and see if it goes clockwise. And then my I am is more than 20%. And you continue going up and uh, continue going up clockwise until you reach a point that it stops. If you're at 8%, that's where it may stop there. And uh, then you can repeat the affirmation until you can get to 100% or you try to, but no matter what, you're higher at a higher level, your dowsing will be uh, better as a result of that. And the third step in securing your resonance uh, is to work with your, making sure you're in, there's no interferences with your environment. And the, a very simple statement is, I am in harmony with my house, my house is in harmony with me. Uh, and you can check it, yes or no. Um, or rotation clockwise uh, can be a, a yes. If it's not, you can make a statement. I neutralize, normalize, harmonize, energize, polarize this property. The property is beneficial for my entire I am being. And uh, probably most of the time you're in harmony with that first statement. If not, you're in harmony with the second statement. If not, you can do the affirmation of I am rethinking, rethink I am. And most likely your everything is in harmony where you have to, if it's not, then go across the street and douse again, and then you're okay from that, that perspective. But uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good technique to have. Okay. Uh, Can you do that I'm, for everything, for um, people, for um, places, um, all of that? You know, the, the I am in harmony with fill in the blank? Uh, yeah, uh, you can, with people, and I, I don't know if I'll get a chance to teach it. If you're working with people, you're working on healing, uh, you can teach them, uh, invite them to come into harmony uh, with their own disharmonies. Uh, but the, the mere fact of state of securing your resonance uh, does a lot of good. And the various steps that I mentioned in securing your resonance are universal. Um, it's just it's just good hygiene in, in essence. So, uh, okay, uh, we're going to do some practice sessions uh, right now, and I think the next uh, uh, there are items you want to test, or there's a mineral that you have, or anything else. Have it around. If you have your pendulum, have it have it around, and we're just going to do a, uh, a little. I'll get off of sharing for a few minutes. Uh, um, okay, maybe I'll read through this. Uh, this is a good set of instructions to read through, and then we'll practice it. Uh, and then I'll talk you through the set, but I'll, I'll read the set so that you know what the set is. Um, the first thing to do, uh, if you're not used to pendulums, and I think everyone in the audience or most people are, is just to hold a pendulum uh, with an inch length or whatever, two inch length, and uh, just practice the to and fro movement just to understand the pendulum. In this case, in the Robin technique, it's a yes motion. Uh, then make it go clockwise, then make it go counterclockwise. And if you're not used to dowsing, uh, you'd also, uh, once you get the clockwise, counterclockwise motion going, you use any battery and just uh, place the pendulum, uh, go to and fro over the positive pole, and it'll go clockwise, uh, just because it's a positive pole, and it'll go counterclockwise on the negative pole, and in the middle of the battery, it'll just go back and forth. And this just give you practice in knowing clockwise, counterclockwise, and yeah, this, you're looking at uh, something else that's not uh, personal wavelengths, but uh, 
it's a practice thing. And then from the picture, you remember holding the pendulum over the back of the left hand if you're right-handed and moving up on the string uh, while initiating a to and fro motion and then around one or three Okay, so hang on. Inches. So if I'm right-handed, I'm holding it over my left hand. Yeah. And yeah. then yeah. what I'm doing, seeing if, what if it's yeah. going in um, clockwise? Yeah, I you uh, it do it back place? and forth. Some people will get themselves reversed, and sometimes you'll have to un to un. Uh, you can sometimes just staying, stating affirmations, uh, yohim affirmations, will get you uh, not cross. Sometimes if you march uh, in place with your right hand touching your left knee, left hand touching your right knee, you you can uncross yourself. So sometimes those things will happen also. Um, and okay, so when you're going to and fro, does that tell you that's your resonance with yourself? Yeah, no, use to and fro, and then you get the string length to, to move up. You move up the string with uh, your, uh, up the string of the pendulum from, you're holding the, the pendulum where the ball is, and then you move up the string with a to and fro motion. And when it's in resonance with you, the pendulum will go clockwise. And I'll show that in just a second. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll stop after this slide and I'll, I'll, I'll go through that and everyone can practice that. Uh, I just want to read through this so that you get the whole gist of everything and then we'll practice. And then you can connect with food at that point, holding the, the, the pendulum at that wavelength, which is your personal wavelength, that inch and a quarter, two inches thereabouts. And um, then if you hold your hand over food, or mineral or whatever. And uh, now you're connected with that uh, uh, food or, or supplement. And if the pendulum goes counterclockwise, it's no good for you. If it continues going clockwise, you're in resonance with you. And if it goes uh, back and forth, it doesn't matter. It's, it's not in resonance and it's not in not resonance. It's, it's just an okay thing. Um, it's all based on the string length. The so string length is really the key here of getting that. Um, so now I'm going to stop sharing so that you can all practice and I'll demonstrate this uh, for you again. And uh, I'll stand up so you'll see my uh, body. <clears throat> and here I have a, a neutral pendulum. I'm holding it where the ball is uh, at the string. I'm holding it over my back of my palm. Then I gradually, re I get the to and fro motion and I gradually uh, slip my fingers up the string. And at some point it's gonna go clockwise. That is now my personal wavelength. It didn't take me very long to get there. That's the reason I do it every time I, I look at the personal wavelength. It's going clockwise. And if I put my hands over something, um, let's say my phone is harmonized, so it's probably okay. It'll go, it'll go clockwise. And this, that a, a phone is a good thing to, to look at because most phones are not harmonized and you're being bombarded uh, with EMF. So uh, check it out. And okay, so you're holding your pendulum at your um, harmonization point, um, your personal wavelength point. Is that correct? Yeah, this is my personal wavelength. I keep uh -huh. that I keep that length constant. Okay. If I change it, I then I have to go back and figure out where it is. I don't mark the string. Uh, you know, maybe um, a quarter inch different one day from another. I don't know, but it's so easy to just. So move. now is that also considered your BG3? No, BG3 is a totally different animal. Okay. Uh, it's still radiesthesia, and BG3, I'll, I'll have some words with regard to BG3 at the very end, because the world is changing, and uh, the 369 BG3 energies are also changing. And I hate to go into the details of that, but I'll, I'll mention some things uh, that you should check anyways without going to a lot of details. The world is changing. The energies of the world is changing. And things that you thought were sacred 
are no longer sacred any longer. It, it, the world is different, uh, but personal wavelength. Okay, so you, you're a little bit blurry because of the virtual background. Oh, okay. So I'll there you go. Bit. Sorry, That's, I yeah. might get too close to it. Um, yeah, okay. That that is so he's uh, right personal. hand dominant and he's moving the pendulum over his left hand. So it's showing you that it's going clockwise. So that is showing you where his personal wavelength is. Do you guys understand that? Very important. Don't understand. Let me re repeat it and redo it. Uh, it's in most of your pendulums will work this way anyways, even though you don't have a, a acrylic ball. Um, uh, it's just who we are, but uh, it's good to have a, a neutral pendulum. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. you know, oh. and if I put it over something else, my mouse, it's not going to go clockwise. Yeah, I'm not, it's not over my hand. I'm not connecting to it. I'm just connecting with the, um, uh, something that has no energy to it. And so it's not very good nor bad. It's just, it's just going to and fro. Something is, okay. Uh, we had a question about um, how could somebody like um, uh, harmonize their phone? Is that something that you can show us? I can tell you how to do that. Uh, okay. Uh, there are, uh, items for sale for doing that. But uh, I, I use the, the biogeometry techniques of, of harmonizing. And in biogeometry uh, 16, uh, 16 lines in a row or four lines, four times as long as it's together, uh, has the harmony energies associated with it. And I'll state that with the uh, tongue and cheek uh, because there's lots of things that are happening in this world right now. But that'll give you the biogeometry harmonizing energies. And then uh, you can put that uh, with a felt pen on your whole, on your case or a piece of paper that you'll put behind your, your phone case. And on another piece of part of the paper, draw nine lines. Um, and the nine lines would be Hooking, connecting to the electrical aspects of, 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 of the energies. So you have the electrical aspects and you have the harmony aspects and the two together will harmonize the, the phone. And uh, it should be perfectly okay at that point in time. Um, okay, there are so some other things that I could talk about, but I'm, I think I'll hold off on that. that Here's uh, saccharin by the way. Okay. And uh, saccharin, uh, I can put that uh, in back of my hand or I'll put it in my hand. And what happens to saccharin with regard to, to me? It goes counterclockwise. Mm -hmm. so, and, uh, and I'm not consciously doing anything. All I'm doing is getting the to and fro motion and letting the pendulum do its work. And I'm just connecting to it. And you, you don't even have to put anything over your hand. I can point an electric light. Uh, my fingers are electric light or think about the electric light. And the pendulum will go counterclockwise because my intention is there and I'm connected to it. You can connect with anything. You connect with things across the world. It doesn't matter. Space time is immaterial uh, with regard to thoughts. So that's another subject. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, that's great. So, um, so we find out if our personal wavelength is in harmony by um, holding it in the sweet spot over our hand and either thinking about or holding it over that item. Yeah, right. And when I go yeah. shopping, I, I a lot of times bring my pendulum with me, and uh, there's organic food, non-organic. Which should I get? Uh, it doesn't make any difference. Mm -hmm. Very simple. You just go over to the food, put your hands over it, and get your pendulum. Uh, do get your personal wavelength, and you'll know which is the right food. Okay, Bowsers so have I better ways to do that because uh, if they don't want to carry it, they do the finger thing, or you stand and sort of the body, uh, stand yeah. in front of the food. And if your body goes forward. Uh, that's okay for you. If it goes backwards, it's not okay for you. So there's lots of techniques that Bowser's use, but uh, 
the pendulum, uh, you're, is, is tech, these other techniques are, are doing the same thing. <laughs> okay, you just quick don't call it question. Yeah. <laughs> so, the, so we find out if our personal wavelength is in harmony. So you showed us that. Um, and if we want something to be in harmony or resonance, um, I know you're probably not going to show us that tonight, but um, that is possible. Right. Or do we need to ask questions to see if that is possible? Well, um, no, you feel it's not in resonance. It's not in resonance with you. If okay. it's infected with the bacteria, if it's a food, it's infected with the bacteria uh, at a level that's high enough. And no matter what you're going to do, you're not going to get rid of it. So you just you just know that that is not good for you. If the food has a pesticide associated with it uh, and it res goes negatively or you're allergic to something, um, you know, certain milks um, are good for me and certain milks are not good for me. And I test it and I know which brands are good for me because uh, the bad ones, I have a reaction to it. Okay. Yeah, I can bless the food and I can change properties of food too. Um, you can make something you're allergic to, not allergic to you by doing certain things. And Joachim is a master at that. <laughs> so, uh, but you can do all sorts of things. Uh, uh, and uh, you're powerful. Everyone is powerful. Everyone in this group is amazingly delightful. <laughs> or uh, in Joachim's current work, beautiful. Yeah. So uh, that that is, uh, okay. Does everyone understand personal wavelengths? Because we're now use it to go to the next step and look at your I am. I'll talk a little bit with some slides on your I am, but now you're going to practice your your. Uh, and learn who you are and know who you are by watching your pendulum go rapidly clockwise because just saying your I, I'm rethinking I am is gonna cause this to happen. Okay, I didn't do anything, why, did, why is it going faster? Then you know for sure who you are. You may not know it right now, by the time you're done with this exercise, you'll have an inkling of that point, so. I will go back to sharing again and go through a, a few slides, but uh, any other questions on personal wavelength? It's a very important subject. Um, I, there, this has been so rich with information that there's just a lot of um, people want to make sure that they get the um, recording. So they're putting <laughs> their, uh, their emails in the chat so that we can make sure that we receive the recording. And if okay. you're watching this later, it'll be on YouTube um, under Lone Star, Dowsers, um, on YouTube. Okay, I'll go back to sharing then and share. Oops. Okay, now we're going to look at the pendulum as a tool to measure your vibrational energy level. And this is part of learning who your I am is. But before that, let me just talk a few minutes about I am. Um, and what it is. We will be testing for it, but let's talk a little bit about your I am state. Because your real essence is I am. Uh, you have your ego, you have your job, your professions, you're a teacher, you're, you're an architect, uh, whatever you are, politician, liberal, doesn't matter. But your real essence is who you are, your basic you. And that's what we're trying to get to, is to connect to that essence. And we're not just matter. Uh, we're not just our bodies. You're much, much more than, than that. And everyone's essence, uh, well, the other point is, everyone is the thought creation of, of God. So we are of God. And if you don't like the word God, Choose whatever word you want, but you're, you're a thought creation. And it's the same concept of, of water. Uh, you're the wave in the water. That's a wave that's independent, it's moving across the water in the lifetime of that wave. But what are you? You're still water. The table you're, sitting, you're at, where your computer is at, the chair you're sitting at, it's all part of the same thing. It's still water. It's part of the thought creation of God. 
or whatever term you want to use, it's still water. And there's another section that I don't think I'll have time to go through. That I'll go through that exercise of what is matter. And I'll show that matter is really is light and vortex. Uh, that, if I don't get to that, read my first book, uh, uh, The Seeker and the Teacher of Light. And I'll explain all of that. But we are part of that ocean. We're all one with that ocean. We are all one. Okay, um, we're, we're gonna look at is the rotation of the pendulum. And two things happen with rotations. You may only get to one part of the rotation, that's okay. If you state an affirmation while you're uh, uh, doing the personal wavelength uh, on the back of your hand, the wave, the pendulum will increase uh, significantly. And if you go deeper, and you maybe repeat the affirmation two or three times or state another affirmation, uh, you can reach the center of stillness. And at that point, the, the pendulum just ceases motion. Everything is still. And if you're a meditator, you know that feeling because if you meditate, when you're at that center, time ceases and everything is at peace and you're at the center of stillness. So that's the other, uh, that's the end that you'd like to be at. But even if you don't reach that, the mere fact that the ro pendulum rotates faster teaches you a lot about who you are. And the rest of it is just practice and knowing and understanding who you are. And really the whole basis of enlightenment is really knowing who you are and knowing it at a deep, deep level. That is what it is. And if you know the Hawkins chart, it's easy to move up the chart. Just know yourself and you'll move up. Okay, let's. So you're gonna show us how to do this? Yes, we're gonna to have to exercise on this also, but I'm just gonna talk about it. Uh, and uh, you've already secured your resonance uh, previously. You've learned how to fi find your personal wavelength. You're looking at the rotation of your pendulum. Uh, you, then you state an affirmation. Um, and then uh, by stating that affirmation, you can watch the pendulum uh, move more uh, rapidly uh, in a clockwise manner. Um, I talked about this uh, reaching the stillness, so I'm not going to go through this slide. Okay. Um, I'll state this, and then we're going to all repeat this, and then I'll, I'll get out of share. Uh, momentarily also. And I'm going to uh, state, there's a number of different affirmations. I'll teach you a number of them. Originally, I had, I am everything I am. And I thought, well, people might not like that statement, even though that's true. But they may not know what I'm rethinking, rethink I am is. Uh, and uh, uh, therefore, whoops, let me go back a second. Uh, and but the pendulum will still go faster because they're connecting to who they are. And yeah, you can douse and find out your level of, of, of uh, uh, rotation by just going, uh, is my uh, my am is more than 10%, more than 20%. And you watch the clockwise rotation of the pendulum or the rod. And at what point does it stop? Uh, they'll tell you where you are. We may not necessarily go through all that. Uh, uh, those steps, but what, the main thing is to have you be able to state an affirmation. And let's see if we can move you in to your uh, uh, center of stillness. And I may have Joachim do that too. Okay, let me go back here. I'm going to stop share and uh, just so that we can be looking at each other uh, doing this. Uh, so, Okay, that's in focus now. Uh, so, am I in focus? Okay. I'm going to go into uh, my uh, uh, personal wavelength. So, I'll just get the string length to be going clockwise. So, I'm at my I am string length. Now, I'm going to make a, a statement. I am rethinking, 
rethink I am. I'll say this a couple of times. I am rethinking, rethink I am. I am rethinking, rethink I am. Pendulum is going very rapidly now. And your pendulum is going rapidly. Yeah. Feel what's happening in your room. And with this whole group. You're in that center of stillness now. And you feel that. You are in that level of stillness. And I get, well, I can feel that stillness that is there, that, that uh, uh, I didn't get the complete st stillness center, but I'm very, I'm in it. And Joachim was doing it, and probably with Joachim's help, uh, we were all in that center of stillness right now. And you can feel that. That's not something I made up. That's something that you are feeling within yourself. And that's very valuable. Now you know who you are. And now I'm going to define what uh, rethink means, too. Uh, I was going to do that later, but I think now is a good time to talk about that. And why does that affirmation work? When you have thoughts, thoughts are linear. They just go out. Uh, I'm a liberal, I'm a conservative, I'm a teacher, I'm a student, whatever it may be, that's what it is and that's what you're locked in on. That is thinking, that's thoughts. And it's not a high vibrational level, but that's, who we're, that's what we do on an ongoing basis. But when you rethink, you spiral into the truth. It may take years to get to the very bottom of the truth, but you're spiraling into it. Who are you? You are I am. So when you're saying, I'm rethinking, rethink I am, you're spiraling into who you are, the essence of you. So even though you didn't know the definition of what I stated when I was making that statement, by just stating that, you are spiraling into your essence. And that is, that's because that's who you are and you're now connecting to who you are. So rethink is a valuable word and it should be used not just for looking at your personal uh, wavelength and the I am, but in everything in life. Rethink. We're certainly bombarded with thoughts out there now. If you rethink, get at the truth, get at what it is. So it becomes you who knows and understands. So let me go back to share, uh, share now. Uh, hope that's an important message. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Okay, some alternative affirmations I use. It's good to learn, know a few of them. They're all in my book and uh, they're all, if you don't want to buy the book, go to the website, uh, jerryjin.com and there's a section called affirmations and you'll have a lot of these. The latest one will come out in a new book uh, that I'm working on, on, on the birth of the new humanity, but they'll, they won't be out until the end of the year probably. But uh, they'll have some of the newer things uh, that uh, Joachim has created. And he is wonderful at creating these things. You can say, I am inviting thoughts within thoughts within thoughts to rethink with me, I am. That's very powerful because that acknowledges who you are, your thoughts. But you're not just one thought. You're many, many, many thoughts. Yes, your conscious mind is plucking things out. So you think you're one thought. But if you recognize that you are thoughts within thoughts within thoughts, you are. 
when you're if something hurts, uh, your arm is hurting, the cells in your nerve is hurting, it's causing a uh, pulsation. And when in healing, you could say, I am inviting uh, harmony with the disharmony of those cells. Well, the cells have their own thoughts. They may not understand they're causing you a problem. And therefore, and you can't just say, do it, because that's, that's a command. So you're inviting the thoughts to come into harmony with their disharmony. And it's a different way of thinking about things. Uh, and it's a very valuable way to think about things because there are many layers of thoughts and you're trying to get to the thought that is at the heart of whatever the problem is. And, and when you say, I am inviting thoughts and thoughts and thoughts to rethink with me, you're collecting all these thoughts. And if you could repeat this three, with three thoughts, six thoughts and nine thoughts, as part of my three, six, nine thing that I, uh, discovered uh, years ago, you know, Tesla said that if you only knew the magnificence of 369, you have the key to the universe. Well, I figured that out. And 369 is a, a key part of that. And that's talked about in, the, in the, my book, but I won't go through this here. What are, are we our thoughts or are our mm -hmm. thoughts something outside of us? You are your thought. Thoughts are everything. Your body is there. And yes, there's all, there's various aspects of it, but uh, you're, a lot of what you are is your thoughts. You are your thoughts. You create your realities. Uh, that's the reason when you materialize the parking space, well, your, your, your thoughts materialized it. Uh, and if you're healing or doing something and tension or synchronicity is happening, it's your thoughts. Uh, you think you're changing the world because of your thoughts? Well, yeah, your thoughts are having an effect because everything is thoughts. Uh, and People, don't, that's a hard thing to grasp because we're all used to uh, things being this material thing. And we're used to saying that this illness is this illness. And therefore, if the doctor says, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. Well, it's thoughts. And, and Joe Dispenza has a wonderful story about that. The guy was told he was going to die. Then Joe gave him some other stuff. And, ah, uh, I'm not sick, the cancer went away. Doctor says, you're gonna die. And if you get sick again, it's everything is thoughts. But that's another level of thinking about things. Okay, uh, key words. Uh, okay, I mentioned where my affirmations are. They're in my various books and, and links. Uh, what are some key words? Uh, words have power. Words are not just words. It's Words are the expression of your thoughts. So you create with your thoughts, with every word you utter. If you disparage a person, you've created that thought and that person has, it has an effect on that person. If you say the person is amazing, delightful, that has an effect on that person. You're changing that person's reality. Uh, just the word I am. And just breathe in with I and am is another affirmation, actually. It's I am. That is recognizing who you are. We talk about uh, rethink. And so I won't talk any more about that. We have uh, a question. Evolve. Are thoughts the same as consciousness? Um, you are conscious. And uh, if you have a thought, in, within that consciousness, that would be your thought within that consciousness. That's probably the best I can explain it. <laughs> you're, you're completely blank and you're in that uh, never, never land of a perfect harmony. You're not thinking about it. Uh, and your, your thoughts may just be pure harmony that, that, and pure love. And at the, in the afterlife, you always, people who, in your death experiences always talk about being in the other side and encountering Pure love, because that's a state of things. Uh, so, um, you are, your consciousness does not cease at that uh, death. Uh, you, you are eternal. And so, get the thought out of your mind that, ah, oh, I have only this life to live, and that's it. 
No, you pass on, you're into your other reality. You're into another uh, uh, dimension, which is another vibrational level in, in essence. And, uh, and read up on the, I, uh, the, uh, the IONS uh, information and their death ex uh, stuff. My very good friends are, are channelers and I've spoken with people on the other side. Um, and I've had some channeling done that uh, this, you know, one of the astronauts on the other side, when I created the, the Challenger transcripts, when they had spoken in a channeling session, they decided to give me an experience in channeling. Uh, and they, they came through and I heard their thoughts. So uh, the other purpose that we're here, we're, we're not here just to be here uh, and be nothing. We're experiencing life, so we are evolving. And part of it is experiencing, doing, whatever it is, thinking, all the things that you're doing, you're evolving. So part of what you are is to evolve. So I am evolving, states your purpose in, in uh, life. Limitations, we're really unlimited. It's uh, our thoughts that uh, create their limitations. Uh, if you say, uh, thank you so much, you just use a, a set of words that are limiting. It's like saying, I love you. Uh, uh, I only love you so much. Uh, it's, it's, it's limiting. So thank you so much is limiting. I thank you very much is not limiting. So there are limitations as how you choose your words that is key. And to state, I am beautiful, uh, if you're a guy, I am beautiful, you may not want to use those words. That's not the meaning of that. The meaning of it is who you are, your I am essence. You are beautiful. You are amazing. Every single one of you. Amazing. Um, someone has unmuted themselves, so okay. <laughs> please mute yourself. Uh, I thought I'd uh, talk a little bit about your creative abilities, too, because I've shown you that you are, I am by looking at your, your vibrational rate. Let's do a couple other little simple exercises. Uh, I won't go do it for you, but I'll talk about it. Uh, because you can do this yourself. Uh, if you are blessing water, the BG3 level is a biogeometry no, number. Um, it's a level that you, there's a ruler, biogeometry ruler, that you can measure the amount of, of uh, harmony energy. And so we call it BG3 energy. 200 is you know, just so-so number. There's, there's some energy there. Uh, so it, you, the tap water is at 200. If you put your hands around the, the water, just put your hands around the water and hold it for one minute. If you now test that water, the water will now go up to about 10,000, which is not bad. That's about sp good spring water. So now do level. we need to um, measure that before we do that? Um, um, well, you have to have a BG3 ruler you can measure it without it, uh, but I, I can, uh, I'll, I'll describe what a BG3 ruler is. It's 90 degree angles and, uh, and every, yeah. okay. Um, I learned this because in the, uh, the biogeometry folks know this, they know that a 90 degree angle is a barrier to subtle energies. So if you have a series of 90 degree angles uh, pointing in one direction, that creates a series of barriers for the subtle energy to travel through. And if you put your, what you want to measure, like your cup of water, you have a series of 90 degree angles there and you give it numbers, uh, 100, 200, 300, 400, uh, how many barriers does it go through? Um, uh, and you'll get a number. In the BG3 geometry uh, lessons, you learn that particular ruler they use 
Um, they have one rule that goes up to, uh, I think, 3,000. And uh, 200 is, uh, uh, is, is, is towards the bottom of it. Um, and you just test and douse uh, the water. And in this case, you're looking at the BG3 levels of, of the water, which is another special pendulum. And it'll go through to uh, uh, 10,000 after you bust it. But the point I'm making here is this last point. Your hands, boys, first of all, change the water. That says who you are. But now if you really believe in who you are, make a strong, emphatic statement knowing who you are. Maybe you've gone into your I am affirmation, and you've, you're just into that, and now you're coming out of it, and you make the statement, I am blessing this water. That simple statement jumps the water to a million BG3 units immediately, done. Just and, which by is stating the first that. time I did that, I was just amazed uh, at that because I had not done that. I'd done the 10,000 and I'd done other things to measure water because I looked and studied kinetics of water uh, quite a bit. But just that simple statement by knowing who you are does it. Okay. That's the first lesson of uh, understanding your creative abilities of who you are. Okay, subtle energies. You can copy these energies and you can uh, move it to different locations. You can move the color red, the subtle energy of red, which is not the color red, because the color red is one thing, that's a physical attribute of it. But the subtle energy of red, uh, if you do that, you can move that to another location and someone else at another location a thousand miles away can get the, the wavelength, the subtle energy level of red. If you place it on the wall or a table, they'll go through the table and find where you placed it and it'll be there. So distance does not matter. Your ability to do things is there. If you copy something onto a piece of paper, that energy will stay with that piece of paper. You can photocut that copy, that paper a million times, that energy will still be there even though you may not see and the persons don't know that it's in there. So the Indians who said, oh, if you take my picture, you're capturing part of my soul, it's partially right. It's just a copy of, of energies. And, but that energy is there. And therefore, if you have something of a high energy, and you want to copy it. Let's say you want to copy of something that's high energy onto a tile disc that you want to put your water bottle on. Okay, all you have to do is think I'm copying this energy and permanently copying it onto this tile. That energy will now be in that tile and stay there. I have tiles that I put my water on for about a year and energy hasn't diminished. I put it on a cloth and put it in the, in, the, uh, in the clothes washer, yeah, it's going to go away. I've changed properties and done some things, but that tile is still, still stays there with that energy. And I've done things like uh, my wife has arthritis of the hand, and I uh, put some energy of my I am energy into it. But I am energy, by the way, goes away as soon as your mind goes away to some something else. So I permanently copied that energy onto a wristband, and she wore that wristband overnight, and her arthritis the next morning went away. Uh, she couldn't move her wrist the, day, the night before. So these things do work, and I'm not saying it works all the time, but uh, it's, uh, and I'm not trying to sell anything, but you're working with energies, and energies are real things. So that's my so you talk on creative the, abilities. The, the, is it the subtle energy or the high energy to your water bottle? Um, uh, well, I'm blessing the water, and mm -hmm. by blessing the water, uh, the water has picked up my blessing, <laughs> uh, whatever that is exactly, but it's part of I am blessing the water, and the water has picked up that, that energy, and that energy has a harmony aspect to it, and the, uh, the pendulum 
the BG3 pendulum, there's a BG16 pendulum that will pick up that harmony. And it picks up that harmony and I can measure that. Uh, and it takes special uh, rulers to pick up a million units. It, it's not your standard little ruler. I've made rulers that are uh, longer than a, a long table. But I've also learned how to, to measure energies without that, that ruler also by, uh, by understanding connecting to energies. That's another story altogether. Um, well, I'm just okay, we thinking we're all thoughts. here together yeah. um, and we could, in theory, copy some energy and send it to, I don't know, the closest body of water to us, right? <laughs> Uh, you could, you'd have to be able to measure that water to see what's happening. You're better measuring just a, a simple color, which doesn't have much vibration, and send it to a friend, uh, and maybe after the meeting, send it to a friend and, and have them find it. Um, you know, if, they, if you both know how to uh, check for the subtle energy of a color, uh, that's probably an, an easy one to, to do because you don't have... A BG3 pendulum and BG3 has morphed and other things have morphed and it may be harder for you to, to do that without my going through some further explanations of, of the morphing of things. So, uh, but we create with our thoughts and we create with our words. Everyone has free will, so they're free to think however they're, they want to think, but we're still one and we have to act responsibly as, uh, as the creators so we have to create with a sense of responsibility. And when I'm creating, I always want to be in the state of harmony, balance, and love uh, so that I don't mis mistakenly create in a way that is uh, negative. Is, uh... Okay. Um, probably time is almost up. I'll talk a little bit about... Uh, uh, yeah, we're 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 good. We have fifteen more minutes. Um, okay, uh, what I'll talk about is some of the changes that are occurring, uh, in in the, why why there's such a thing as birth of a new humanity. Just to give you an inkling of what's happening, I won't tell you all the things that are happening because that that's that'll be in a whole book. Uh, but you can pick up, and what I'm using are colors to look at. Uh, uh, things uh, and colors are what radiesthesia uses to uh, look at energies. Uh, if you're looking at red, you're looking at one of the resonances of red. It may be an op octave uh, that's uh, uh, way, way different than the color red. Red is a color. Sound of a certain note is also an octave of red. Uh, so, and beyond sound are other vibrations. So you're picking up vibrations. That's what you're doing with subtle energies. Uh, you're not necessarily looking at specifically the color red. You're looking at the energies of that red. And it may go ad infinitum in both directions, higher and lower. And that's what you're picking up when you say you're in resonance with that uh, color. Uh, but it's the color red. So you can pick up the, the resonance of the color red. So that's how you find and, and pick up the colors. And I showed you how to pick up the color red with subtle energies with a neutral pendulum. And that's all you're using, the neutral pendulum to pick up uh, that color. Okay. If you look at the aura of a person, it's not the standard aura that you're looking at when you're looking at, uh, uh, when you go to one of the fairs and they take a picture of you. You're looking at the subtle energies around the head. And uh, if you're in balance uh, back uh, last year uh, in the March time frame, usually there weren't too many colors. There's colors running through the center of you. There's colors in your, uh, maybe in your biofield, but not too much around your head. Um, and things changed. So in April, I didn't see much in terms of the colors around the head. Um, but in, on May 19th, a couple of things happened. Suddenly there's a cloud of energy around the head. The cloud of energy had ultraviolet, white, and violet. 
It wasn't there uh, in April, it wasn't there in January, wasn't there in uh, uh, year 2022, but it was there. And these colors were in bands that wrapped around the head. So there's green at the very top and then yellow and blue and then indigo and orange and red and infrared and, and black was around the head. Very interesting. Something changed. Uh, will this stay there? Well, we looked at it again. And I'm working with a couple of friends. Um, Meg uh, is one of the close friends uh, who lives in Michigan. And, uh, and she noticed that uh, on the 20th, oh, no colors. Everything disappeared. And suddenly my pendulums weren't working. So the colors disappeared. Ability to measure BG3 that's disappeared. My special pendulums to measure 369 uh, were no longer functional. Then on the 21st, all the colors returned, but now stronger than ever. And all the abilities to measure personal wavelengths, BG3, 369, returned. Now, Jerry, Very interesting. Who, who were you measuring? Um... Who's, who's, it it doesn't, didn't matter. I was, could measure or my wife. I could measure. I could look at a picture of a person. So it didn't uh, matter. It was consistent. It didn't, didn't matter. It okay. didn't matter. Uh, all things, things happened. Uh, okay. I waited uh, until June. We looked at it and all the bands of colors disappeared. You know, all colors uh, all the ultraviolet, violet uh, disappeared. Now there was just a cloud surrounding the person and the cloud had all colors. And all colors becomes important uh, later on because I think that's the new norm that's come into existence. Uh, now we had all colors. These are subtle colors. Again, it's not the colors you see when you go to get a camera shot of, of the colors around you your head. So it had all the colors, meaning that if you look for every single color of uh, that I showed you in my little color chart, all the colors were there. And the biofield also had all the colors around you. Very interesting. And at that point, I said, things are happening and we got to follow this. And that started the concept of creating the book, Birth of a New Humanity. Okay, what happens with regard to the person? In March, in the central column, you had the various colors, but in bands. And the bands uh, went through, up through the crown and below the feet. And those colors changed. Uh, at night, they reversed. So the colors of the bottom, what became the colors on the top, the colors on the top became the colors on the bottom. And your biofield, which is an egg-shaped thing, uh, also uh, changed. And you had a corona of, of, of colors uh, around there also. So that was March. When you look at yourself again in June, July timeframe, the central column of colors disappeared. And in the biofield, it's all just white. In yourself, it's all just white. And you do have now orange and infrared uh, and indigo and ultraviolet on the outside of, of, uh, of the uh, biofield. And these colors actually connect with the opposite sex. Uh, uh, usually males connect with the females with the indigo ultraviolet and females connect with the males with the orange and infrared. Then in July, after there's been about nine activations that we've counted up to this point in time, so there's no time to go through it all, but everything is now white. Uh, and the corona, and the energy surrounding that also disappears. And by February, in, in January of this year, uh, the, the outside of the, uh, a biofield now has two new colors introduced to it. Everything is still white, 
but now the new colors of ice mauve and ice blue have come into existence and into our, our being. So, <clears throat> but things are happening not just with regard to us. The whole field of biogeometry is based upon separation of colors into various uh, uh, segments, um, bands, angles, I'd say. A blue is a certain angle from the center, indigo is set another angle. And in the way that things were, uh, these subtle colors situated themselves so that green was at the top and, neg and horizontal negative green was at the bottom of the, that circle on the left there. And that's and if it's uh, and it's the north side uh, on a compass would be always green. So you always tell what green is. If you have green grass and you have a neutral pendulum, you'll know where north is because just draw a circle and wherever on the circle you find uh, green, the subtle energy of green, that's north. And you know uh, where uh, east is by finding violet and where uh, red is. Um, by just tuning into where it is on the circle. But that all changed um, in, in the 2024. Now you have a whole new set of colors and the locations of them are all different. And that figure is still morphing. Uh, so I'm, anything I say is not guaranteed to be the way it is tomorrow uh, because it's an active thing that is occurring to all of us. So everything I say about VG3, 369, anything I say, don't take my word for it because things are morphing. Activations are occurring on an ongoing basis. Pyramids had a certain colors associated with it and certain orientations. It used to be before 2024, colors were shown on, on the left. Um, negative green was on top and positive green was on the top. Uh, on the negative green on the bottom, positive green on the top. Um, and, but in 2024, all that changed. And some of these colors seem to morph and move also. And I won't go through the colors because you're not going to remember it anyways. But things changed. Uh, then I decided to look at the, the periodic table of elements. And uh, here's a periodic table of elements with all the elements in it. And I decided to look at all the elements. And uh, in the beginning of the year and the last year, uh, all the elements had certain colors to it, but you can never isolate the colors because they kept changing. Uh, and if you go to a different time, different locality, it'll change. So hour by hour, there are changes. So I, what I was looking for is, is there any commonality between colors and uh, the table of elements? Uh, or the rows, there's something that's there. I couldn't find any until I came up with the bright idea that if you put magnets and put this periodic table, this acrylic block in, in under a magnetic field, that stabilized the colors. Uh, so the colors now, each row of the, uh, of the periodic table had the same colors. So I, I could prove that. And therefore, probably the uh, electron orbitals of each row uh, behave the same way. That would be my conclusion on that. Well, okay, that, you, I thought I learned a lot. Wouldn't you? But, that's a fascinating. Wouldn't you say that our magnetic field, the Earth, is changing? I mean, it's magnetic. No, I'm putting uh, these little round circles uh, at the corner of this. I'm putting magnets on it. Right. I'm physically putting a, a magnet. And uh, on on this uh, on this on this uh, uh, acrylic block, and by putting the magnets on it, it stabilizes the colors that I found with each element. So, uh, uh, whatever the elements are on a particular row, they the elements on that whole row were say the third row: negative green, white, violet, orange, black. That whole row had that color. If I, if I were in Michigan, Meg would have a totally different set of, of, of colors. It stabilized it for her on a totally different setting. Uh, so you're just stabilizing it momentarily for whatever it is, but it stays that way as long as the magnets aren't moved. You move one magnet, 
everything goes out the window and the colors change again and, and the field is no longer there. But an interesting thing is that now in 2024 in February and in March, uh, all elements have all colors. So everything has changed. And that's why I say in the upper left-hand corner, all elements have all colors. So every single color that is on that Regis Caesar chart of different colors, every element has that now. That's an exa example of, of a change that has occurred. There's also a thing called still, centers of stillness. I don't know if I should go into that uh, because that now you're talking about vortexes and centers of vortexes, but they all have the center of stillness that, that is there. And a lot of houses now are in centers of stillness. I'll come back to it if you want at the very end, if there's any time left. Uh, the symbol of life is another structure. And uh, it's a very important structure. It's an old structure. It comes uh, from flower of life uh, structures. And Dasklos, uh, in one of his incarnations early uh, in, in his lives, uh, probably the time of Toth and Egyptians and things of that nature, early before, uh, you know, 15, 20, 30, 50,000 years ago. Uh, if you stabilize the energies on such a structure, he did it and he could remember past lives and he could remember the ancient languages. So people would go to him and say, translate this for me. And he did, he'd be able to do it. So I looked at this chart and said, what are the colors associated with that? And I found that the colors varied with time, um, uh, with time and also with locations. Uh, so Meg and I would always have something that is, that is different. Um, but in February, when I looked at it, the colors are not white, infrared, or whatever it is. All colors are there, and now you have uh, the still centers are there with regard to the structure. So again, massive changes have occurred. Human frequencies, same thing. Human frequencies are the frequencies, uh, lightning strikes, uh, the, the waves that are formed bounce off the ionosphere and it forms uh, uh, frequencies that are low in the seven, eight Hertz uh, area, some are above and some are below, but they're in that, those frequencies. They're the same frequencies as the brainwave frequencies in that ballpark at any rate. And if you're not exposed to these frequencies, uh, you get sick. Astronauts got sick because they weren't exposed to these frequencies if they're in space. So they had to learn that uh, used to give uh, these frequencies in certain ways. And that's the whole basis of the industry, pulse electric magnetic waves, PEMF mats. But uh, if you look at the colors, each of these frequencies over time has different colors associated with it. Uh, but what happens is that in February, all the colors became, all the frequencies became all colors. Same thing happened. And uh, stillness, uh, still centers form. Uh, your chakras, your chakras are, are evolving also. And these colors aren't the colors that you normally associate with uh, chakras because these subtle colors will change with days and times, uh, just like everything else changes. And don't tell me, ask me what it all means. I don't really know what it all means. They change. But the change now is that in uh, last year it changed on a continual basis, but they're single colors. But now, Everything is all colors and everything is still centers. Yeah, so I hear the scientist in you is just um, studying and recording these different um, uh, various factors and how they're changing and they're all changing in similar ways. Yeah, exactly. It even elaborates. So how, you... how does that affect us? Well, I think it affects us in or a lot you know of different this? ways and... Uh, uh, I can go through the philosophy of it. Let's see, should I forget this labyrinth? I don't know if it's really important. Uh, well, yeah. this last slide may be important. Labyrinths change in the same way, go through life, 
And it, when you walk a labyrinth, you really are going through different aspects of life. There's a path in, path out, and this sort of mimics your path in, in life. And the colors change, and the colors then also goes away. Same, same thing. And BG3, 369, those energies are also changing. BG3 used to be yin energies, and yang was 369. It's now, uh, oh, let's see, the other way around. Uh, yang was BG3 and 369 is yin. And uh, they've now uh, reversed and uh, the colors associated with them have also changed. So, and how they interact with each other have changed. I won't go through that because it's complex and I don't know what it'll be like tomorrow. So no use talking about that. Um, but let me see if I can answer We're your question. We're about out of time. Oh. Okay, I'll stop sharing. And mm. um, I probably threw too much at you guys, but uh, I thought that uh, if I didn't have a presentation, you wouldn't get this. You'd just be having me ramble onto various things. And I thought that it's better to show you stuff rather than ramble. Yeah, well, it's it's fascinating. Um, okay, we have a few questions. Let's see if we can. Um, uh, somebody says, um, these are some older questions. Do we determine our fate? And can you say something about karma, past life patterns, or genetic patterns impacting this reality here and now? Um, especially in relationship to physical health and manifesting as challenges. Yeah, well, karma does exist. Uh, and in our channeling, uh, the Columbia astronauts came to my house after they had passed on. Um, and we had two amazing channelers. Uh, uh, and uh, they described some of their, the reason they came was that they didn't want to have the karma of their death to relive in their next life. And so they want to relive it uh, under channeling so they won't experience that. And uh, so for Regina, she was uh, the one who was channeling uh, the captain. And the captain was uh, going through his uh, suffocation because that's the first thing. The Columbia uh, space shuttle burned upon reentry. So the first thing you lose is oxygen. So he was gasping for breath, and poor Regina was gasping for breath. It was very traumatic for her. And the reason they did that was because they didn't want to have that experience of having to have that to overcome in whatever they choose as their next, next life. So karma is there. I think that, um, and if you read Yogananda, um, the, the biography of a yogi, uh, he says, you know, do your... Uh, uh, meditations, uh, and uh, the, he teaches a certain meditation, uh, and uh, that uh, helps to overcome some of the karma, uh, so he can do various things. Uh, uh, so there are things that can be done in a lifetime, and how you lead your life, and, and how you do things uh, does have, have an effect. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think there is such a thing as, as, as karma. And okay. there definitely is something, uh, there, there's definitely reincarnation. Uh, we have a, another question. Do the vertical and horizontal radiesthesia pendulums still work um, the same despite the color changes? Uh, that's a loaded question. And um, uh, in a sense that uh, pendulums may not, uh, I'm just gonna state, uh, I'm gonna go give a political answer because I, I'm a, I'm a biogeometry guy, and therefore uh, anything I state uh, can come around. <laughs> uh, that's the reason I gave answers that are uh, that things are changing and morphing. Well, and, and I guess uh, everybody can also check for themselves too. Correct? Oh, yeah, that's def that's Which the reason I have personal wavelength, and that's the reason you've got to check on everything, all the energies that are there that are good and bad, whether it be a necklace, a mineral, check it. Part of what's happening, when you ask the question, what is happening to us? Well, I think we're becoming more resilient. Uh, things that were uh, going counterclockwise to us are now no longer going counterclockwise. Things that were going clockwise that were good for us, 
are now just going to and fro, which means that you don't need it any longer. When it's going clockwise, oh, you're eating food, it's still good for you. Uh, but if it's going back and forth, you may not have that need for that any longer. So it's dependent upon you. And I'll just answer that as the my political answer on how to answer that question. Okay. Um, okay, last question here. Um, might these color changes have to do with the earth changing polarities and, and the humans way of adapting their energies? I probably can't answer that entirely, but things are happening starting in the May timeframe. It may have started earlier than that, because I think the earth, the sun, the galaxies, I think everything is involved. Some of these colors that we're getting are from the center of the galaxy. And we can measure that. So things are happening uh, all over the place, and and we're just picking them up, uh, and we're just recording things uh, that are are, are there. Uh, but magical things are are happening, uh, but we can't see it on the physical level. Uh, you can only see it on the subtle level. The subtle level, where you know, when you look at the archetype uh, of who we are, it's all at the archetype level that things start happening and then eventually materializes into the physical. But uh, so things are happening uh, in, in, in big ways and we are changing in big ways. That's the reason uh, sometimes I do personal wavelength and I check it out one day it's there and the next day it's not there. Uh, and then the following day it comes back or not come back depending upon what was happening. So it, it's That's very confusing in a certain yeah. sense. Well, and we're fixing to have a big eclipse um, that's coming right through Texas. Um, so that should be interesting, <laughs> to say the least. So, all right, we have gone definitely over time. This has been fascinating, and I thank you so much. Um, we may have to have you back again, um, Jerry. This is amazing. And um there's also, there's lots of appreciation in the chat and um, thank you, um, do, you call, do you call it Joaquin? Um, um, anyway, just um, grateful yeah. for, for you and, and your teachers. Um, thank you so much. Yeah, well, I'm grateful for Joachim. He's, he's an amazing guy. <laughs>